Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My brothers, my sisters, bismillah wa alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. In order to achieve contentment, Allah has prescribed fasting. And in Surah Al-Baqarah, in verse number 183, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون. O you who believe fasting has been prescribed upon you just like it was prescribed upon those before you in order that you may develop your relationship with the Almighty, in order that you achieve consciousness, in order that you achieve taqwa. My brothers and sisters, if you take a look at this, when we fast, how would we achieve contentment? Number one, we calm down. Number two, we realize that it's not all about filling our own bellies alone. We control, we achieve discipline, and that's how you get contentment. We become compassionate. Because when I'm hungry, I start thinking about others who are hungry. And I start thinking about those who don't have food at all. When I think of them and I develop my relationship with the Almighty, I will automatically reach out to them by giving them a little bit of what the Almighty has blessed me with. And this goes back to the point we raised where by reaching out to those who don't have, we would actually be achieving contentment and happiness. So it's amazing how the fasting is all connected to achieving contentment. If you are conscious of the Almighty, and if you have developed your relationship with the Almighty, you will definitely gain contentment. Another thing, during the fast, we are taught to be careful of what we say, what we utter, you say words that will please Allah, the remembrance of Allah, all sorts of good words, and you make sure you stay away from bad words. The reason why you have to stay away from bad words is because by mentioning or saying bad words, you're going to hurt people's feelings. When you hurt someone's feelings, you will not be able to achieve contentment. So this is why the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, tells us, Whoever does not leave false witness and bad words, wrong words, evil words during the fast. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not need the fact that they have stayed away from food and drink. They have actually wasted their time. So if you watch your mouth and you only say good words to your spouse, to your children, to your family members, to those whom you work with, to those whom you interact with, etc., you will definitely achieve a calmness and a contentment. All this, the training of which we receive during the month of Ramadan. What a beautiful, blessed month. Similarly, the Prophet ﷺ tells us how important it is not to react and retaliate to someone who's abused us in any way, in a way that would create a bigger problem. When you're fasting, you should go out of your way to say, I am fasting. You've sworn me, but I'm fasting. I'm not going to swear back and I'm going to train myself to become a better person even while I'm not fasting. Amazing. Which means even during the days I'm not going to be fasting later on, I will still be of this high level of morality, high values and so on. So my brothers and sisters, immediately after the verses of fasting, and I've spoken to you very briefly about how we can attain contentment through fasting, Immediately after that, the Almighty makes mention of something very, very powerful. وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانٍ When my worshippers ask you about me, ask you meaning Muhammad sallallahu about me, tell them I'm very near. I'm very near. I respond to the call of those who are calling out to me, asking me. So ask me and I will respond. Imagine the Almighty is telling us how important it is to call out to Him for our needs. When you have a need, you first call out to the Almighty. You ask the Almighty. You make sure that you call out to Him alone and you make sure 
that you are content just by the call. Why content? He may give you what you want and if he knows it's not good for you, you are so convinced and you have so much in terms of belief in the Almighty that you will know he didn't give it to me because perhaps it wasn't the right time, perhaps it wasn't the right thing, perhaps it wasn't good for me at all. So we called out, we received the reward by calling out and you know what? When we called out, we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has heard that particular dua and supplication. And so we were satisfied in Ramadan and outside Ramadan. We call out to Allah in Ramadan, call out to Allah more. Imagine Allah creates needs within us so that we can develop a relationship with him. If we didn't have those needs, would we be calling out to Allah? Many people whose lives seem to be flowing and smooth, they don't even call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact, they don't even fulfill their own obligations unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hence, they lose contentment, they lose that happiness. You cannot achieve happiness if you don't have a link with the one who's made you. It might be a temporary feeling of joy, it might be a temporary happiness, but it's not a deep rooted contentment within the heart. And this is why the Almighty tells us about calling out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just after having spoken about the month of Ramadan and the fasting of Ramadan. Do you know the term Shahru Ramadan is actually mentioned in verse number 185 of Surah Al-Baqarah, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, شَهْرُ رَمَضَانَ الَّذِي أُنزِلَ فِيهِ الْقُرْآنِ هُدًى لِلنَّاسِ وَبَيِّنَاتٍ مِّنَ الْهُدَى وَالْفُرْقَانِ Allah says, it is the month of Ramadan, شَهْرُ Ramadan, the month in which the Qur'an was revealed. I pause for a moment, give importance to the Qur'an in this month. It is also known as the month of the Qur'an. The reason why it's known as the month of the Qur'an is the Qur'an was revealed in this month. So there is a greater reward to give importance to the Qur'an during this month. My brothers and sisters, I encourage you to pick up the Qur'an on a daily basis during the month of Ramadan. Read a page or two at least, a little bit more perhaps. Read the meanings of it, try and understand it, put it into practice and try to convey that message to others. You will definitely achieve contentment. If you want happiness, you cannot afford to divorce yourself from the recitation of the Quran and the connection with the Quran, even through its understanding and much more. So my brothers and sisters, after mentioning the Quran and the month of Ramadan and the dua and the importance of supplication, here is another point of achievement of contentment the months of Hajj. Immediately after that, Allah says, Al-Hajj ashhurun ma'lumat. Wow. Allah says, do you know Hajj is actually within specific months. So the months of Hajj commence immediately after the month of Ramadan because Allah wants you to gain contentment. Go back and look at the sacrifice of your forefathers. Look at the sacrifice of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Look at the sacrifice of so many others, subhanAllah. Take a look at how life was for them, how the water came about for Ismail and uh, alayhi salam and his mother Hajar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessings be upon them and all of us too. And so you start preparing for the Hajj. And during the Hajj as well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us of something very, very interesting. He says, لَيْسَ عَلَيْكُمْ جُنَاحٌ أَن تَبْتَغُوا فَضْلًا مِّن رَبِّكُمْ فَإِذَا أَفَضْتُمْ مِّنْ عَرَفَاتٍ فَاذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ عِنْدَ الْمَشْعَرِ الْحَرَامِ There is no harm in seeking from the virtue of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no harm in doing business. And this is speaking about during the time of Hajj. However, there is a time when you should not do business. What is this time? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to encourage us or instructing us in fact to draw the balance, to strike the balance. On one hand, he says there is nothing wrong to do business, but when you get to Arafah, you should actually focus on what you're doing. My brothers and sisters, the lesson of contentment in this is 
we need to know where to draw the line when it comes to the deen and the dunya, when it comes to the, 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 the spirituality, the religious side and the worldly side. If you don't know how to draw the line or where to draw the line, you will never achieve contentment. So Allah says, you can do business, but when it comes to uh, this day of Hajj, cut it, stop it and concentrate on Allah. The same applies to us on a daily basis. Your salah, you cannot remain watching your football match or watching a movie or doing anything else while the prayer is going on. You should know that this is a line. Let me put this aside, get to Allah, I'll get contentment. And who knows, your team might win. But at the same time, you, you, we would actually be from those who've pleased Allah. Nothing was going to run away, but you might die. You might leave. That might be your last opportunity to actually do that act of worship and engage in it. And you didn't. You delayed it. So no way to draw the line. The same applies in our relationships. We're busy on our phones. We're busy with another relationship and we're uh, leaving our wives and our family members, not spending time with them. You need to know where to draw the line. And this is the lesson of contentment that I've derived from the point that Allah's given us to say you can do business but you can buy and sell when it comes to Arafah uh, and as you are uh, engaged as you are supposed to be engaged in the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala muzdalifa etc you quit and cut the business because now you concentrate on something else you need to know where and how to draw the lines so my brothers and sisters it is something amazing that's why Allah says يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا ادْخُلُوا فِي السِّلْمِ كَافَّةً وَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا خُطُوَاتِ الشَّيْطَانِ إِنَّهُ لَكُمْ عَدُوٌ مُّبِينٌ O you who believe, enter into submission in totality, not just a little bit. You don't just follow one or two things and expect contentment. You want contentment, enter into submission in totality and don't follow the path of the devil. For indeed, he is an outright, clear, open enemy. So here we go, my brothers and sisters. We have such a beautiful reminder where Allah is saying, submit in totality and you will achieve contentment. May Allah grant us that contentment. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallama wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad wa sallamu alaykum wa rahmatullah.